Good morning. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and a very special welcome to all the guests who are in worship today with us on the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Today is a little bit different since we have a couple of baptisms this morning. After our opening hymn, we will begin our service with the Liturgy of Holy Baptism on page 268 in the front of our hymnals, and then we will continue on with the uh, Divine Service 1 on page 151 in the front of the hymnal. We sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches 
that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever and unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are these children named? Callum, Matthew, Ablett, Blake, Robert, Ablett. This is Callan. Callan, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart. To mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. This is Blake. Blake, receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart. To mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be blessed, to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Callan and Blake according to your boundless mercy and bless them with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in them which has been inherited from Adam, and which they themselves have committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that they may be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with fervent spirit and joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, they would declare, be declared worthy of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for the baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life in Christ and love for the neighbor. All right, candidates. Candidates, step forward. Is this your intention, to serve Callan and Blake as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you, you all to will and to do faithful and loving work, and with his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up into his arms and put his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. You may be seated. Since the children cannot speak for themselves, I will address you as the as the candidate sponsors. As sponsors of Blake and Callan, do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all of his works? Do you renounce all of his ways? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Do you believe in the Son of the Lord? Blake, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you members of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs with us all, treasures of heaven, in the one holy Christian and apostolic church, we receive you in Jesus' name as our brothers in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Please rise. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, that you have granted Blake and Callan the new birth in holy baptism and made them members of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as they have now become your children, You would keep them in their baptismal grace that according to your good pleasure, they may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to praise and honor your holy name, and finally with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, since you govern and sanctify the whole Christian church by your Holy Spirit, Hear our prayers for all her members, and mercifully grant that by your grace we may serve you in true faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Go back to your seats. We continue with the Divine Service 1 on page 151 in the front of our hymnals.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We say together our introit. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has declared his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I had desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. And priests I will clothe with salvation. And her saints will shout for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. Also with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Ezekiel chapter 2. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are also impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of our Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise Whether in body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which a man cannot utter. On behalf of this a man I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast, except of my weakness. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears of me. So too keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations. A thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of our Lord. shall we go you have the words of eternal life alleluia alleluia our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of mark chapter 6 jesus went away from there and came to his hometown And his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense to him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And then he could not do any mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. 
And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And as they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We sing the hymn of the day. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a story that I once read about from the beginning of the 1900s. The countries of Argentina and Chile had been at odds with each other because of the location of the border between them. The conflict was escalating, and there was great fear that a war would soon break out. Before armed hostilities could happen, a woman who was in the right place and the right time had the idea of using a seven-meter-tall statue of Jesus to end the dispute. She was extremely well-connected socially. She was a friend to the president of Argentina, and somehow she was able to get both countries interested in the idea of establishing the statue of Jesus between their two countries in the Andes Mountains. In 1902, diplomacy won out, and there was peace between the two countries. 
Two years later, the statue now known as the Christ of the Christ the Redeemer of the Andes was unveiled. The statue was there to symbolize the peace between Argentina and Chile as long as it stands. However, shortly after the statue was unveiled, citizens in Chile took offense to it. They felt like Chile had been rejected since the back of the statue was facing toward Chile. And tempers started to get high. It was raging throughout the country until one of the local newspapers published an editorial about the statue, and it calmed everyone down. Not only did it appease the citizens who felt that their country was being rejected, it also made them laugh. Part of the editorial read, the people of Argentina obviously need more watching than the people of Chile. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus Christ was rejected at Nazareth. You'd think that he would be accepted the most in his hometown. That was where he grew up. That's where he came from. Just about everyone had to know him. You'd even think that there was, even though there was so much talk and rumors about Jesus and how popular he had become, that they would have given him some sort of the equivalent of what we have today as the key to the city. But that's not what happens. Instead of receiving a warm welcome and praise from the people who knew him since he was a child, Jesus received only ridicule, scorn, disbelief, and rejection. When Jesus preached in the local synagogue on the Sabbath, the people of Nazareth weren't overcome with awe and wonder. They weren't amazed by Jesus' wisdom. They were astonished in the sense of confusion and disbelief. They must have looked at each other with that confusion and skepticism all over their faces as they said, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? They took offense to him. This wasn't something new. This is something that had been happening ever since God started sending prophets to his people, especially in the case of Jeremiah. Nebuchadnezzar had just destroyed Jerusalem. Those who survived the destruction came to Jeremiah and said to him, May the Lord be true and faithful witness against us if we do not act according to all the word with which the Lord your God sends to us. Whether it is good or bad, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we are sending you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of our Lord God. This sounded pretty good. The Israelites were reeling from what had just happened to them in their city. They eagerly awaited to hear what God wanted them to do. And God told Jeremiah to tell them to stay. He said that he will plant them and raise them up and relent disaster that may come. But if that if they didn't stay, if they flee to the land of Egypt, the sword that they fear will follow them there, and there would be famine and death in the land of Egypt. At the time, the land of Egypt looked like a pretty good idea. It was relatively safe secure, and most of all, it was away from Nebuchadnezzar. So what did they do? They rejected Jeremiah and God's word because it wasn't the answer that they wanted. They rejected God's promise for them right where they were, and they went out and got into Egypt. 
They thought that they knew better. They thought that they knew what they wanted. Has any of this really changed today? No, not really. Pastors are still rejected in today's world. They're probably more suspected and rejected right now than they ever have been in the United States. In the eyes of mainstream society, pastors aren't seen as preachers of the gospel. They're seen as preachers of hate, of unacceptance because of an ancient book that tells them that they shouldn't be accepting of what is now acceptable today. The book just hasn't quite caught up with the times. People don't like hearing that they're not perfect either. People don't like hearing that they're wrong. People don't like hearing that they're sinners. We as Christians don't like hearing that we're sinners either. And we don't like thinking about it. We don't like looking at ourselves in the mirror when we examine our lives. The guilt makes us uncomfortable. Even though we don't like it, even though people all around the world don't like it, it doesn't change the fact that they, that we, that all of us are sinners. It doesn't matter if it's something that we consider to be small or large. A sin is a sin. It's disobeying God. It's rejecting God. It's rejecting God's law and replacing it with our own. It's become such a frequent thing in today's world. People think that they know better than God. People believe that they can live however and do whatever they want as long as they aren't harming another person. Because of this, Christians get rejected. Pastors get rejected. The Bible gets rejected. Jesus gets rejected. Despite this rejection, the rejection that God's people gave to Jeremiah, the rejection that the people of Nazareth gave, the rejection that people today give, despite all of that, Jesus still gives his gifts to everyone freely. His death on the cross was for the whole world. He died on the cross so that everyone might be saved. He offers forgiveness to all who ask of it. But the sad truth is not everyone does. Not everyone believes. Jesus still offers these gifts of forgiveness and salvation to all. He still offers them until someone's last breath. Christ reconciled us with God so that we are no longer sinners in his eyes, but pure and righteous, just like his one and only son. Even though it may feel like the entire world is at odds with Jesus sometimes, we still need to pray that someday the Holy Spirit will work in the hearts of those who reject Christ and come to believe. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
In our prayers this morning, after each petition that ends with, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, your ascended Son reigns over all the nations. By his gospel, pour out your Holy Spirit on your people. Open our lips to speak your word with boldness to one and all. By the mercy we have received in your Son, holy shape our lives in love, so that all that we say, all that we do, may bring you glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy. Kind Father, move all congregations to send forth the call to repentance without fear. Keep them faithful in their proclamation of your word, especially in the face of those who oppose it and refuse to hear you. Raise up new workers for your harvest fields to speak your word as we wait for the coming of our Lord and the final fulfillment of your every promise. Lord, in your mercy, Ruler of the nations, protect and care for our country. Give wisdom to our president, our governor, and all who make, administer, or judge our laws. Bless all public servants as they attempt to provide safety and stability to our society, especially those who serve in our military, especially Becca Havlett, Valerie Hostetler, Brietta Larman, and Hank Peening. Give them courage to protect the free, and to exercise the free religion and honor and protect every life from conception to natural death. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your grace is sufficient for us and your power is made perfect in weakness. Into your loving hands we commend all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Carter and Xander Herzl. Joseph May, Laura Smith, McKenna Thomas, Jean Fugin, and Reverend Theodore Gall. Grant them patience in their afflictions and trust in your wisdom and strengthen their hope as they look forward to the final healing that awaits all your children at the day of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. These things and everything else you know that we need, grant to us. Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offerings.
remember the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We call on the name of the Lord. I will the cup of salvation. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Again, good morning and welcome to all in worship today with us. We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, there will be a voters meeting today, uh, right after we leave here and after a little bit of time for fellowship. Also, as a reminder, VBS starts today. And if uh, you'd still have a child that you'd like to attend a VBS, get in contact with Erica Anderson. Her contact information is provided on the back of the bulletin. Also, uh, next at Sunday, we'll, we will be starting a new Bible study a video series on church and state, a four-part video study from the Lutheran Hour Ministries. Are there any other announcements I may have missed this morning? Yes.
Any other announcements? If not, have a wonderful week in the Lord.